Hey peeps, this is Mango, welcome back to another episode of the Computer Craft Tutorial Series. Today what we're taking a look at is screens, and the way you can use them to really make your base look cool, or to implement buttons. I'll see if we get around to the button thing, but anyway, you can see on the, on the right screen over there, that it says hello. And you can do a lot. Of, you can do a lot with this. You can create different colors of text. You can even um, assign it to variables, which in Nerd Talk means you can assign it to things that actually make sense. And like, for example, how how fast rea your reactor is going, or what time of day it is, or even like how far away your turtle is, or if your furnace is done cooking. You can do a lot with it, so let's just jump straight into it. So you can see it says hello, and it's quite large. It's pretty much centered. So I've just put this on this screen, and you can see this computer's running. So I'm going to come over here and do it from this computer. So on this computer, I'm going to go ahead and type edit monitor. This will be our program name. Now, first we have to declare the monitor. Hold on. First we have to declare the monitor, just like we declare this or or some or any other accessories and it basically means we can reference it reference to it later so monitor equals peripheral dot wrap and it's on the right side obviously you want to put this to whatever your monitor is on oh yeah one other thing i forgot to mention your monitor doesn't have to be this size despite claiming it's a disk drive up the top, it actually isn't, it's a monitor, but what you can do, if I grab some monitor, I, wow, that was grammar, hold on, I'm sorry to get a bit distracted here, but you can, it can be anything from this size, and as long as it's square, well, as long as it's quad, as long as it's a quadri quadrilateral, it actually form into a big monitor, so it's really good for creating large scale base monitors, anyway, so, the next thing we have to do, is we have to clear the monitor. Now you're probably thinking, wait, why do you have to clear it if it's already clear? Well, keep in mind that if you write something on a monitor, it will stay there until you clear it. So, we have to make, every time we run the program, we have to make sure it's cleared before we do anything. So, monitor, dot clear, right? Now, what's the next thing we need to do? We need to set where the cursor needs to be. So, by default, the cursor is up here, right up the top left. And the cursor is basically where it begins typing. You know when you, like down the bottom here, see that blinking light? That's the cursor. Imagine that on a two-dimensional scale. That's how the screen works, basically. So, what we want to do, monitor dot set cursor pause, not position, just pause. And we, and we want to set this to where it is. So, if we put one, one, It'll set it up the top. Now this is an x x and y value. Um, I do believe the first one is the x value, so how far it is across, and this one is how far it is down. So if we want it to be kind of in the middle, then I think a good value for that is three, two. Now let's go ahead. Monitor dot right. Oh, hold on. If I can type properly, that is, and. What will we put on there? Hmm, we'll put on this. Hello world. Probably a bit too long for it to, to write, but let's see. Now you can see it's up the top. Now you're probably wondering why this isn't in the middle, but you can see it is... There's nothing here. <laughs> um, you can see it is actually spaced pretty well from the top, and it says hello world. Now you're probably wondering why it isn't in the middle, despite having the same... If I just go and edit this one. You're probably wondering why this isn't... Since this is the same position, why it's right in the middle. It's because of the text size. The text size influences where the cursor ends up. So if we go back in here, and we want to set the cursor scale. Let's do that. Set cursor scale and you can do this on it and any value between 1 and 5 should work fine so we're gonna go with 5 and you can see it says hello world well it's trying to anyway you can see that there is a bit of a problem the text scale is too big and it's just going off the page which is expected 
So, we're going to try and fix that. Uh, first thing we'll do is actually minimize the text scale. Or we'll put it down a bit. We'll put it to 3. Maybe that will make it look good, but still make it quite readable from a distance. There we are. I think that's pretty good. So, so you can see it's pretty much visible from any distance, really. So, it's really helpful for base building and whatnot. Now, what if you wanted to change the color to make it give it a bit more spice? Then what you can do is you can go ahead, monitor, edit monitor, is uh, monitor dot set uh, text color. That's what it was, wasn't it? Keep in mind that it has to be color with the two O's and no U. And this has to be it can be a color, uh, current text color. So basically, this can be any color. It's a, it's a number between one and sixteen, I believe. So we're going to try some random number. We'll say eleven, because why not? Okay, there we are. It's in light blue. That looks pretty cool. Let's have a look at some other colors. Maybe two. There we are. It's orange. So you, you can. You can really change and customize the colors of all this fancy stuff. So now let's try something. Let's try something a little bit different. What we're going to do is going to create a little counter for this. So the first thing we're going to do is going to create a loop, so it constantly does it. So what I'll true do. Now I do, I am aware you don't you don't need to put all this stuff within the the while loop, but that's just to be safe. Now. After this, what we'll do, I'll put end here so I don't forget it later, which is what often happens. Uh, like this. What I'm going to do next is I'm going to go ahead and monitor. Dot set cursor pause. And we're going to make scoot a little bit further down. Maybe about six. One. Around there. Now, I don't know how where, the, where that's actually going to appear, but anyway, now, you're probably wondering, hang on, we already, we already said cursor position here. Well, remember that the cursor position here is actually this. So, you, once you set it to the cursor position to write this, you can just scoot it, you can just go down and just continue writing, because all these execute in order, remember. So, monitor dot write and we're going to write a variable and we'll call it number and we actually need to create this number of course so if we go up the top num equals one right plus num when it executes it will when, when it executes his command here it will plus one to whatever number it is. Now, by num, by, well, that was logic. Um, by default, num is zero. So, num equals one plus zero. So, num will equal one for this cycle. So, when it goes down here, it will write one onto it. Then when it, then when it, um, then when it goes again, it will do it again. Now, I need to put a sleep function here because otherwise the numbers will just be flying past. And we'll call this, and we'll, we'll say one about that. All right. So next we've got to actually see where the text is. Okay. So one thing I did forget to do was convert this to a string. Now, because this is an integer, as in numbers, we actually have to convert it to a string to display it here. We can't just chuck that in there. So what we're going to do is we're going to go. Uh, num2, so it was a new variable, you can see I put it in there. Num2 equals uh, two string num. So what that will do is it will convert the integer, like it could be three for example, it will convert that to the actual letter three. That's the character three, say that. There we are. Alright, so one thing that did fix the problem was actually um, making it 1 for the first thing. Because I'm pretty sure when we're declaring this, it was um, it was declaring it as a nil value. Um, so basically, this fixed the problem. Now, you can see it was counting up when I was running the program before. 
and now let's run, I'll show you. So you can see, it's counting up from one. That's pretty cool. So you've got your encounter and it can always update. So, that's pretty cool. Unfortunately guys, it's going to do it for this episode. I apologize for not getting the buttons in this episode. Um, the reason being is because the Die Wolf 20 button API, which is what I was going to use, it's called a C of Die Wolf 20, um, was not properly working and I also couldn't figure out how to use it. So, until then, I hope you enjoyed this episode, I hope you learned something, and we'll see you later.